Yeah, hi, this is Doc Montana, and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. In our video today, we're going to look at equations and linear equations. In specific, we are going to look at linear equations in one unknown variable with fractions. Without any further ado, let's take a ride. Uh, so now we have the first problem here. So now you need to take note of the leading statement, which is when you're dealing with linear equations in, in one unknown variable, those that have fractions and if they have braces, you have to make sure that you get rid of the braces. If they have fractions, for you to be able to solve for any unknown variable, you need to get rid of the fractions. That having been addressed, let's look at the first example here, which is uh, 2x over 7. 2x over 7, which is equal to 4. So now what you need to do is, for you to solve for this unknown variable, which is x, you have to get rid of the fraction. So how do you do that? So when you have a fraction and a constant separated by an equal sign, what you do is you introduce a 1, that side as a numerator, and then you cross multiply. So this one will be multiplied by 2x, and then a 7 will be multiplied by a 4. Uh, so now we can resolve those. We say 1 times 2x, that gives us 2x. That is the identi identity property of 1. When you multiply it by any number, you get the number multiplied by 1. Then 7 times 4, that one gives us 28. So now we divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2 into, that's 1, 2 there, 1, and 2 there, 1. So what we're going to remain with on the left side of the equation is x, which equates to 2 into 2, that gives us a 1. Then 2 into 8, that gives us a 4. So the value of the variable x in the first equation is equal to 14. Let's move on and attempt the second problem, which is x plus 4 over 4 equates to 2x minus 3 over 3. Equally, the first thing that you have to do is you get rid of the fractions. So these are algebraic fractions. So what you do is you cross multiply. This 3 at the bottom here, as a denominator, will be multiplied by the numerator which is related to diagonally. So we're going to have a 3 multiplied by x plus a 4 there, which is equal to this 4 here will be multiplied by the numerator on top there. So you're going to multiply by 2x minus 3. Let me get rid of everything that I had written in the first place. Uh, so now we can soldier on and finish up what we have started. So we have to expand the brackets as we indicated in the first place. So that is 3 times x, that gives us 3x. Then 3 times 4, that gives us a 12, which is equal to 4 times 2, that gives us 8x then minus 4 times 3, that gives us a 12. A 12. Okay, beautiful. So now what are we going to do for us to, to determine the value of x? So what we'll do is we need to collect the like terms on one side and the other like terms on the other side. So we can actually move this to this side. So what we'll do is, for us to get rid of this 3x, we are, we are going to consider its sign. So since it's positive, you're going to bring in an additive inverse of 3x, which is negative 3x. Now what we do this side 
is what we do even on the other side of the equation. We add negative 3x. All right? So equally, we want to get rid of this 12. So we add the additive inverse of negative 12, which is positive 12. So an additive inverse is a number which if added to the another number, the answer is 0. So now what we do this side is what we're going to do even this side. Since we've added positive 12, we will add positive 12 even on the other side. So now take note of this. If we have negative 1 and then we're adding it to positive 1, since the signs are different, we're going to subtract and the answer will be 0. Equally, when we add positive 3x to negative 3x, the answer will be 0. So what are we going to remain with? So we're going to add 12 plus 12, which will give us 24, which is equal to. And then this side, this one will give us a 0, because this is negative 12 and that's positive 12. Since the signs are different, we're going to subtract and the answer will be 0. Now, for these other two uh, terms, you, you consider the, the signs as well. So you see this one is positive, that one is negative. So we're going to subtract the 3 from 8, and that will give us 5x. And so now, since that's what we have, we can now get rid of the 5 by dividing it both sides of the equation. And run on that one out, and we have x. So now 5 into 24, how many times does it divide? So 5 into 24 gives us a 4. A remainder 4 over 5. So 5 times 4, that's 20, plus that, that's 24 over 5. So we can say, therefore, here you don't need to panic. It's just as good as writing this as x is equal to 4, 4 over 5. And we're done. We can now do the, the third problem. We can work out the third problem. Okay, so with the third problem, let me write it here. That is x over 2 minus x plus 1 over 5, which is equal to 3. So in a case where you have two fractions on one side and then you have another one on the other, what you need to do is you write these as a single fraction. So these are partial fractions, so write them as one. So what you do is you don't cross multiply here. You will need to look for the lowest common multiple of a 2 and a 5, which is a 10. So the lowest common multiple is simply a number into which you can divide another number without leaving a remainder. So now after you've done that, you now divide a 2 into that denominator, which is the lowest common multiple. So that 2 divides 5 times into 10. And that 5 you found multiplied by the numerator here. So you're going to have 5x minus, you're writing this one here. Then 5 into 10, that gives us a 2. So the 2 now will be multiplied by the numerator, which is on top there which is x plus 1. Let me extend this line here, uh, which shall equal to a 3. So we can expand the brackets here. Now, and this is the point at which people mess up everything. So we write the first term the way it is. Then we, as we multiply to expand the brackets here, you multiply negative 2 by everything. Consider the sign that 2 has so it's negative 2 negative 2 times x that gives us negative 2x then negative 2 times positive 1 that gives us negative 2 over 10 which is equal to 3. at this point you can check around to see which terms are like terms and those which are not so that if they are like terms, you add them or you subtract them, considering the signs that they have. So now since we have negative 2x and this is positive 5x, 
we're going to subtract 2x from 5x and we're going to have 3x minus 2 over 10 which equates to a 3. So now the arrangement that we now have is more like the one that are uh, like those the, the ones that we had in the previous problems that is a and b so when you reach at this point you can now bring in a wonder and then you cross multiply so one times three x that will give us three x then minus one times two that's a two which is equal to ten times three that gives us a thirty Okay, so at this point in time, we have a linear equation in one and only variable. So what you need to do is you bring in the additive inverse so that you get rid of this negative to this side and move it that side. So now what you do this side is what you do on the other side. So we have brought in positive 2 because it's actually the additive inverse of negative 2. And we, when we add these two, we're going to eliminate them. We are going to have a 0. So we will remain with 3x, which is equal to 30 plus 2, that gives us 32. And then we divide a 3 in them. So we're going to have x, or 3 and 3 cancel. So let me write this here. So now we're going to have x, which is equal to... 3 into 30, that's 10. A remainder, we have a remainder of a 2 over 3. And that is the value of x. That's how we do it. So now, uh, before you write an exercise, because I'm going to give you an exercise, just to check if you've understood that. So if, uh, now before you do that, uh, I, I just urge you to, to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, so now let's move on to the next problems. We check if you're able to answer those problems. So that's an individual work. Okay, so now when you are done, make sure that you, you, you send the answers right on this uh, video in the comment section. Well, thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed.